Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Bowtie Movie Lounge. I'm your host, Jacob Strupek. To my right, we've got Samuel McCullough, who joined me on the last episode with Speed. Yes, that was a good one. Good one. And another good one, who was, which was Prisoners, who was joined by David Dickerson. The legend myself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, obviously. Needs no introduction. Neither of them do. How y'all feeling? Good. Good. Good? Good to be y'all here. Like, like your Celsius little cocktails? Of course. By Non-alcoholic. Co- by cocktail, I mean, just not even shaken or stirred, but Celsius. Of course. Not a sponsor with a little <laughs> bit of lemon. Not a sponsor? Not a sponsor. Shout out to Celsius. Just, yeah, just, just a little shout just, out. Just a little shout out. A little. <laughs> well, gentlemen, are y'all ready to go fast? Ready to start your engines for this one? Fast and furious, as some might say. Yeah, fast and furious, which... It's not the movie we're doing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, why don't you sit back and relax while you're at the Bowtie Movie Lounge? We're reviewing Ford versus Ferrari. No. Whatever it is, Shell. No. Trust me. You're going to build a car to beat Ferrari with a Ford. Correct. <laughs> How long did you tell them that you needed? Two, three hundred years? Ninety days. <laughs> this isn't the first time Ford Motors has gone to war. We know how to do more than push paper. Go ahead, Carol. Go to war. Thank you, sir. Do you think you can beat Ferrari? I can try. We're lighter, we're faster. That don't work, we're nastier. We're gonna make history. You ready? I was born ready, Mr. Shelby. Hit it. Let us see Paul Allen's car. <laughs> oh, wait, wrong, wrong, wrong no. Christian Bale movie. Yeah, yeah. Wrong nice, Christian nice, Bale nice, movie. Nice. Ford versus Ferrari came out in 2019. Kind of weird. This came out like the year before COVID. How does yeah, that it's, feel? It's, uh, it's BC before COVID, as some might say. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, BCC. Before the world changed. Yeah, before co- or BCW, before COVID world. Yeah. Before I actually COVID thought about world. that whenever I was looking at the. The date, I was like, this is before COVID. I know, just just a year before. Like, how does that, like, just, that's such a different time. Yeah. I mean, it's the filming yeah, yeah. happened, like, a year before that, so they yeah. were kind of in the golden age. Yeah, I mean. I mean. I, I got a question. I got a start with a question. Okay. If you're in this position, would you rather be the racer or the manager? Ooh. You know, I've always wanted to be, like, a car racer. I don't know why. I've even... Being within the film world, I tried bumping shoulders with like the, the stunt drivers, just like, hey, you know, what what do you say? And in fact, I became friends. I don't know if y'all watch like the original, Dukes of Hazard. Like, I've seen some of it. Yeah, you've seen the it's you've seen good. some it's of the original. Good. Oh, they had to do that for real. They didn't yeah. have CGI. That that stuff was what well, they did was ahead of their time. That, it really was. That the, the some of the stunts they did were like, really dangerous. Um, I had uh, some. Like some old fr- friends, they said they were driving through New Orleans, and when they filmed the new F- Dukes of Hazard, mm-hmm. they could see like they had like forty or fifty of the original Dukes of Hazard cars, like the prop cars. The General Lee. Mm-hmm. And um, on the interstate, they were doing the jumps, wow. and and they saw it on, like on set. Like they said, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely nuts. So like you know, so you know like that shot in like the intro title sequence of like mm-hmm. the original TV it. show. I've, I, where, like, I think I've seen the whole first season. Well, so they're in some part of, like, the show, like, they have two cars, two cop cars come and, like, hit each other and, like, do, like, a little spin. I've that seen was, that. was real. Yeah. I met the guy who, like, did that hmm. and stuff. And he, Dude. yeah. I even met, talk like, about dangerous. Yeah. And I've even met, like, the stunt driver, of the guy that did, like, the guy that did all the mm-hmm. the uh, John Wick stuff. John Wick. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, met, I met one of those guys, too. Tried bumping elbows with them. So, to go back to your question, I think I would rather like to be a driver. Yeah. You know, or at least be in a position where Carol Shelby was, 
where he was a driver who retired and became like almost See, like a yeah, producer. In this situation, would you rather be Carroll Shelby or, or Ken, Ken Miles? Miles? I think both are equally as hard because as the manager, like as you see in the movie, like he's expected a lot, mm -hmm. especially from Henry Ford the second. Like he is expected like to win for yeah. Ford. Like he's not he's not only the guy in the pit, you know, he is he kinda like has to make sure that his driver and him, like, they're in sync. Like right. they should know each other. As as you say, like yeah. Carol Shelby knows when Ken's gonna make the right move. Like yeah. not sure. yet, not yet, go. Like he he's he knows what it's like to be a driver, but I think that also helps with him being a manager. So like right. he can actually like there's some people who try to tell do this and do that and they don't have true real life experience. Ken Miles like was being mentored by someone who had won. I wouldn't say mentored, but was working with someone who knew exactly what he was going through. Yeah, which a lot of managers, you know, like say like a manager or some sort of like business producer, mm -hmm. they've been, they know the ropes. Yeah, they, they have to. They have to know the ropes. Unless if they don't, usually it turns out they're not a good producer right. or, and that's or manager. Why you know, yeah. in sports, like the majority of any coach or manager, they all have, you know strapped on the gloves and hit you know had a crack at the bat like they they know mm -hmm. what it's like it, like it's <laughs> yeah that, like it's really hard to be like a coach for anything if that's being a director in a movie or a coach at a baseball game right. like you really need to have like done this your whole life yeah. i would i would, i'm not saying you have to have but it it it's really kind of important i would yeah. say no very true i see very true so that, what about well you know what's the answer to your own question i think I would want to be Ken Miles for the thrill, but um, he he didn't win. I think that would, it really didn't disappoint him that that yeah. he lost at the end. Right. And I, I like that, but I, I thought it, I if it, if that was me, I would have been really disappointed that I kind of got snubbed by the what's his name yeah. Leo. Yeah. Leo BB. Oh gosh. Yeah. You like that's just one of the few instances where you really start to like create your own disdain and hate for a character. Like, yeah. Like, someone not getting what they deserved. And actually, I read up on something. Even though, like y'all said, Ken Miles, like, remember when Carol Shelby went into the pit and he's like, they're asking you to slow down. He's like, yeah. that's good, you know. But they said in real life, Ken Miles agreed and he wasn't mad at all. Huh. At, at all. Like, he said he wanted to be a team player. And I do think that some of the parts of the movie, they need to implement some sort of contrast because, right. you know, it just helps the plot. You know, like, yeah. you can't make it... It adds depth to the yeah. character. It adds depth, but... True. The point is, after this movie, I think it proves that Ken Miles had the triple crown of yeah. racing. Yeah. He won yeah. the... He, he, how do you say it? The spring? How do you say it? The Sebring? Sebring? Uh, Sebring. Sebring, yeah. yeah. He won the Sebring, he won the Daytona, and... Le Mans? He, he won he, the Le Mans. He won, he won it. He won the Le Mans. Yeah, you know. He te he technically. He, he got first place, and they stole it from him. Yeah. That's, that's winning. Yeah. And when he had that lead, like, that was an act of selflessness. Yeah. And he still didn't get the credit. Which was my favorite part of that end is that it showed that he can put his ego past him. You know, he can yeah. and he can really show that, you know, he he was just doing what he loved. Yeah. Really. Like, you know, he, he just he's he was he was like, You you promised me You promised me the, the drive. time to drive, not the win. And he's like, yeah. it was a hell of a drive. Like yeah. That that's what I was here for. I wasn't here for the fame or the trophy. And I think that's like what like even though everyone's not gonna like Leo B's trail, Josh Lucas did a great role in portraying mm -hmm. someone who doesn't want someone to get something they rightfully deserved. Mm -hmm. And even mm -hmm. better for Ken Miles to show that it's not all about winning. Yeah. It's a great like I wouldn't say like comeback story, but it's more of like a betrayal, like it's not all about winning. Yeah. Huh. It's not. That's and a good point. That's why I think that this is one of one of my favorite, like, I wouldn't call it a sport movie, but like, like just realistic. It is a sport movie. Real, a it is a sport movie. But like, it is, yeah. You know, the like the portrayal of someone who wants to prove it to himself, not mm -hmm. to anyone else. True. The film was uh, directed by James Mangold, a favorite of mine. Really? He, yeah, he did. Uh, he did Logan. He did. I watched um, that recently. Oh, really? Fantastic movie. Loved it. Good. Did Logan. He did Walk the Line, and he's actually directing the upcoming Indiana Jones. With a $97 million budget and making $225 million. 
opening weekend or overall? Overall. Okay. Overall, worldwide too. That's pretty good. That's only pretty good. four years of marinating. That's yeah, I know four years. Honestly, that's, that's fifty million a year. That's I think it did pretty respect, well. You know? I think it did pretty well. Spoiler alerts for anyone who has not seen the film. I think people should see it. Gentlemen, do you concur? I do. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was good. So it's it was it was definitely a uh, time for me to watch it. I'll have y'all know. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we did. just watched it about you know yeah, thirty like, minutes ago. So pretty these much. Are, these are fresh thoughts. So, yeah. Very fresh thoughts. I will not be as detailed in the specs. I did what researching that I could without mm-hmm. being spoiled or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but no, I mean. Yeah, because there were lots of twists and turns. Yeah, there were I mean, some. There, there were stuff. If you had spoiled it, wouldn't have made it as good. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, so what are y'all y'all's personal thoughts? And you had mentioned more of like a numerical score. Like a score. numerical score. Sco- uh, oh, yeah. so. Rating. So, yeah, we'll start with you. Where, your overall, start with your overall, like good okay. or bad. So I like have this kind of five, five point system. I do overall uh, cast, mm-hmm. plot, characters, and then I kind of do like the ending. I like mm-hmm. to have the ending as one of them. Okay. Overall, at um, before I watched it again, because yes, last night I watched it and I was half brain dead. I was barely mm-hmm. watching it. But after today, like, I feel like subtitles I need to watch more because sometimes I can't hear them, you know, sometimes. Right. But I think I'm going to bump up my overall rating to a 9.3. 9.3? Mm. Okay. 9.3. Wow. wow. But, okay. Um, so a, so like near, a, near masterpiece. My highest rating has been a 9.7. Well, I've never gone was, above. Was no, no, let's, no, no. Do, do we want to wait until uh, we, we, we we're review gonna that? We're going to wait for that. Until we review that. it? That will be a, a I, podcast special yeah, I'm gonna, where I'm he gonna, pops up. Oh, oh. Where he pops up, he's like, he's like, guys, you remember that 9.7 that I gave? This is it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I say okay. we wait for it. Okay. Wait for it. So, but what I'm saying is I try not to, like, put things in a list. I try to put things in a rating. Okay. So you're not... Because I think there's so many movies, it's impossible to have a top five. Yeah. I mean, I know you do, but it's just, it's too yeah. hard for me. But like one of my top fives m- might be if I were to do a numerical rating, it might fall under like a seven. Like, look, the movie is actually pretty bad, but it's just a guilty pleasure. Like, uh, like, like personal, just, like you type personal. Yeah, it's to kind, it, like something more like that, where it's it. more personal. And like, yes, like, so there may be certain aspects that are much better than the other. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'll what you're saying. But now I go into my four other categories. As for cast, I think cast really helped it. I think it had the perfect cast. I yeah. cu- I had my cast at a nine flat. Okay, okay. at a flat nine. Um, okay. I think the plot. I think the plot was like eight nine. Eight nine. Eight nine. Okay. I really liked. I really liked how they were portray it. Yeah. Um, and then um, characters. Characters. I think Christian Bale was very well portrayed as Ken Miles. Yeah. They uh, with the help of actually Noah Jube's character Peter yeah. Miles. He was actually helping in the production of Ford vs. Ferrari. He gave many recordings and audios and videos of his dad and his mother to try to oh. help both Christian Bale and what's her name? How do you say it? Christina, Christana uh, Balf? Yeah. How do you say it? Catriona. Catriona Balf. I'm, but, I'm, we may be yeah, we're butchering, probably butchering it. it but. Yeah. Whatever. But he helped that family really like go very in-depth and well-rooted yeah. in their character. And I really... I really respect that. I really, that's what I love about Christian Bale. He is so good at like switching into character mode. Like, mm-hmm. it's, has he won an Oscar yet? Because if he hasn't, it's coming soon. I can't remember. I need to go back and really check that. But, just what to make I, sure. I think the characters, I think I'll have at a 9 1. Okay. And then the ending, as sombre as is, spoiler alert, Ken Miles sadly dies in a car wreck. Mm-hmm. He as was, he does in real life. As he does in real life. I have a nitpick on that later, okay. but yeah. I think that Matt Damon portraying Shel, uh, Carol, Carol Shelby, Shelby going back and talking to Peter, and as you know, like when you're an 11 year old kid, it's really hard to like grasp like someone dying, but I think he was the way he handed him the wrench and really yeah. was able to connect with Peter just in that one snippet of a way, and then him driving off like a complete yeah. Gangster, I think that really like summed up like not him moving on, but remembering Ken for what he has put into his life. Yeah. Like, and as Peter said, he was your friend. 
Like, yeah. I really think that summed up the ending. And I think the ending was also at a 9-1. Okay. okay. Well, Jacob, what did cool. you think about it? Um, I, I don't know if I'm just coming off of, like, the rush of it. Okay. But it definitely, I think it was a phenomenal movie. I'm, I'm really sad, like, this is my first time watching it, but I'm glad that I've watched it now. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would, if I was to go in a numerical... You don't have to. This is kind of my personal thing. Yeah, no. But th- you should. So, add it so if, if I were, to. if I were to do, uh, just overall, I'll let you do the more in depth. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, numerical, I'd say about an eight point five. Like it was that good. That's what I have exactly eight point five. Eight point five. I, I don't... thought it. I, I think it was in the middle of good and amazing. Yeah. So I, 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 I like the movie. I thought it was a little bit long. Like I think they could have cut out some scenes and shortened I do, it yeah. up. I do understand where that yeah. is. It, I think. Between the Daytona and the Le Mans, they yeah. kind of had a little bit too much separation. Yeah. That was kind of in my plot. My plot was at an eight point seven. Did I didn't do the plot? I did cast characters. And I think I think the, right. Yeah, I think the pacing at some points was a little bit slow Off. because it, it is a two and a half. It hour is a two and a half hour movie, and I think they could have you know shortened it a little bit. But if it's they were sh- yeah, other than that, I th- I thought it was really good, and um, the ending was probably my favorite part of the movie. Like mm-hmm. not the not the ending where he dies, but the in like the almost ending where like he, with the sun. Oh no, 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 no you no. mean the race? Yeah, 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 with the race, with the race, with the race. And, yeah, yeah. So I love the ending where they walk out, and you know. Yeah, like, and I think that yeah. in a lot of these racing movies, like they end up winning, or like all these movies they end up winning. So and I think it was not... a good twist on how they lost. So it's you're really not expecting it. Mm-hmm. And also, like, I think that also gives like a real real life thing. Like yeah. the good guy doesn't always win. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But, he didn't win in the way we wanted him to. He won. He won in the way that is like kind of like real life. Like he proved, yeah. he proved like he was a good driver, and he proved to everyone that it doesn't matter about winning and losing. Now, right. in some instances, yes, that does matter in a lot of movies. But he, he, it was kind of a he won, but he, he lost in some people's eyes. But he won in his in yeah. his heart, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, it was more of just a character development, and it was more on the character. And it left a very good impact yeah. before his passing. And exactly. I think that's why he deserved this movie to portray, like, you know, his his life. And they did. One of my things I wish they had gone into is he did serve in World War II. They didn't mm-hmm. really. They, yeah, they, they didn't they, touch on they that. They did not touch up on that. But I think it was more on respecting his dr- late racing career, not mm-hmm. his war t- career. I mean... Which I feel like would have respected him yes. as a person a little more, but mm-hmm. that's not what we were there for. Mm. And uh, we all know that he served, and we respect him for both of what he's done. Yeah, you know? agreed. I do have some opening questions. Um, I know David started off us off with a... That was a good one. Are either of you gentlemen motorheads? <laughs> um, I've tried to get into it. I'm a big... I'm not, like, a big guy on the parts of a car, but I'm yeah. a big guy on... I've always liked old muscle cars, Same. 60s and 70s. I always like, you know, Pontiac Firebirds and mm-hmm. Mustangs and Corvettes and all those things. Like, you know, I, me and my dad said, like, in a couple of years, like, we plan on, you know, eventually revamping an old model car. And that's kind of something that me and my dad want to do together. That cool. sounds like something that I want to do. I'm not a motorhead in any way, but yeah. I'm more like, I like this car and this car, and it'd be cool to have those cars. Not, not like, I know the... Exhaust pipe and all that other yeah. stuff, but I like cars. You know, just, like you you appreciate them. I appreciate them. I like it, David. Uh, no, no, not no. really. I mean, not. I mean, I obviously like. I have respect for like a good car, but in no way I'm a motorhead. Yeah, I know. I'm the same way. I respect. I love a good. You know, I would love a good. You know, classic Mustang. Yeah. Now, but not in the way to where you're obsessed with yeah, it. Yeah, like, you know, I, I really don't know different specs. Like, people tell me horsepower sometimes. I'm just like, I need to sit here for a second and like be like, oh, wow, that is powerful, you know, something like that. <laughs> yeah, just kind of... I can kind I of bullcrap my way. I this year. <laughs> yeah, ooh, all right, well, maybe I should join you. Yeah, it's not my no, science. No, you don't want to. Yeah. Nah. Well, I mean, nope. I, I'm realizing I need to learn more. But um, I can bullcrap my way through, like having a conversation with a motorhead sometimes either that either i think i'm getting away with it yeah, i can pull crowd my way through a lot of conversations yeah i'm kind of the, the talent yeah it's just a little yeah just a little sociopathic i guess yeah, a little <laughs> manipulation yeah just a little bit <laughs> all right so next question is would you rather have a shelby cobra 
or any kind of Ferrari model? Shelby Cobra. Ah. Mm. Shelby Cobra. Okay. Shelby Cobra. No questions asked. Yeah. Immediately. Huh. Now, do I have respect for out of country cars? Absolutely. Yeah. But I think as um, Lee Iaco, how do you say him? Uh, he's for gotcha. yeah. Iaco. John Bernthal. Yeah, John Bernthal. His his character. I think like when he says is like the movie portrays that. Ford was able to make their legacy mean victory. Yeah. And I think that I'm an American guy, I love America, but mm-hmm. I feel like Shelby Shelby means victory. Yeah. And I I love the car. I love how it looks. Yeah. I, I've seen some and like when you look at it, you're like, dang, that's a nice yeah. car. And I just after watching this movie, I I know the backstory of it. I have yeah. no idea on the backstory of Ferrari right. and okay. although I do know it's a very great car and in basically any other scenario, you're like, hey, you want a Ferrari? I'm yeah, like, and the new Ferrari movie's coming out uh, this year. Yeah, that's So we yeah. need to do that in the future. And, yeah, well, and that'll give some backstory on the other side of this movie. Yeah, it'll, it'll basically be the yin and the, yin and the yang. Because yeah. in this movie, they're the opponents. It's, yeah, it's more, yeah, I mean, they're every, more of the... You're an enemy in somebody's story. That's how it works. Yeah. I, I, I think me personally would have to go with the red Ferrari. Really? You like a Ferrari? I, I, I like... Uh, you know, okay. Senor Ramos will know. A little shout out. Uh, <laughs> the Ferrari is classic, and yeah, I think if I saw Shelby Cobra, I'd be like, "That's cool." But if I saw Ferrari, like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I got your mouth would water a little more. The, the mouth would open. Okay. Water. Here's another thing. All the above. However, this is important. What year is the Shelby Cobra? Okay. It doesn't it, matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Any, well, then any I go year. Any year. Any year. Yeah. Shelby Cobra. Any year. But then again, I do love a good. So for me, I'd probably go with the Shelby Cobra. Mm-hmm. Just because I love the feeling of like more power rather than sp- I don't know. It depends. I, yeah, I like would you rather, I the real Ferrari, question is: Would you rather power or would you rather speed? Because I feel like with a Shelby, I think Ferrari you feel more me, like think, power. Yeah, but I, I think, feel like the Ferrari's more like elegant, yeah. sort of, and like a more of a smooth drive. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I think Ferrari's true. like power. Like have, you see, where like Henry Ford, he's like, oh, if my father could feel this, like the power and like yeah. the complete. The feel, you like can the feel vibration. the ground. You can feel the road you more. You can feel it. You just it gives you that. That's what I would love. Huh. You know that just that tingle, the the spider tingle. Like, well, all right, all right, calm down, calm down, I'm just calm saying, down. I, I'm not trying, okay, <laughs> the little red bunches. Right, right. you're, you're, get, you're getting a little, yeah, getting a little mischievous. Cut down I'm not the, getting mischievous. Cut down the I'm just saying the feel of a fast car. I feel like you feel more from a Shelby than you do yeah. from a Ferrari. True. I haven't okay. been in either of those cars. I've seen both, but but you know what you like. But I know what I like. I like it. All right, well, gentlemen, uh, this this I just love. I'm this type of movie. I don't know about y'all, but we were talking earlier about James Mangold, and even you just mentioned like, mm-hmm. you know, you're American. You love like America. I well, feel like this movie. That's a little too patriotic. What I'm saying is that I have respect patriotic. for American-made cars because over the years. No, you did. You did mention like I'm American. I love America. You know, which it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with that. I know that. with that, but what I'm saying is, a little, a little I think America has been focused on moving all their products somewhere else, and I think... Right. Well, especially with these past few their years. Car- yeah, of course, but knowing that, like, a lot of these old muscle cars are being, like, run out, they're not going to start making them anymore. Well, they're, I just, cu- they're cutting out a lot, yeah. They're cutting out a lot. I mean, people are asking the question, are we going to go all electric in a couple of years, which I don't, I don't think... It's just impossible. I well, feel like there are going to be so many people who like gas cars. I mean, it's going to be very there, hard to just there will be extinct some pushback. gas cars. But I do think the electric car rate is going to go up astronomically in 10 yeah. years. It definitely will be, no questions asked. I mean, no, just there's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. I guess the best way to put that. But, no, so assuming both of y'all saw Top Gun Maverick this past year. We mm-hmm. did. Okay. I felt like that movie was very, and I've heard a lot of people when they talk about it, they're like, that was just so American, you know? Now, which one did you like better? Uh, personally, I liked this, this last one better. Yeah. Just for yeah, certain same. reasons. I, whereas I the original yeah. is the classic. But no, so with that, it just it felt like a, an old-fashioned movie, you know? Top Gun Maverick? Top Gun Maverick. I don't think so. It just felt old-fashioned to me. I, I think don't know it about was. That. You don't know I, about that? I thought that? that Top Gun was a lot. I, I liked Maverick more, but I thought it was more nuanced, like with the new planes and the new. Mm, I, I, just, I mean, are you talking about like the style of the, the movie? The style of the movie just, it, you know, it yeah. just felt like just the um the the like I don't know, just, just the, the style. Feel? Yeah, mm-hmm. just the feel of the it. Feel. 
that's how I felt about Ford versus Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Did y'all feel like that too? I do. I also something I picked out. This is a hit pick, but I'm also gonna say it. I really like the way that the camera has the lighting of the movie. Yeah. It gives a very yeah. old, warm, old feeling to mm-hmm. it, and I really like that about it. Like yeah. just, I don't know. It gives like a shade of more darker orange feel, and I kind of like that in a movie. Yeah. But I think this is for all movies. I don't care how good a movie is. If you are trying to make a second movie out of a classic it's either going to be real it's either going to be really good really bad but it's never going to be able to top it yeah it's very hard because top gun is one of the top all classics yeah but if you want to get as close as you can to being as good as the classic it's top gun maverick yeah well it'll never beat the one-liners in the first one but it is second to not just right there well i just i just mean overall as a movie like it's just like this Top Gun Maverick was able to accomplish this feeling of being making itself original and actually have some having like almost some relevance and creating that on its own. Whereas mm-hmm. I feel like this one did too. This one became almost like an instant classic. Like because a, like, like my, a, like my, a my certified mm-hmm. cult classic. Yeah, almost instantly. I don't know if like y'all feel like that because I'm. I, I feel do too. like I still I, see I it and people still bring it up sometimes. And I think you know even mm-hmm. within the film world too, especially with. James Mangold making more and more, and it's just like, oh, you know, Indiana Jones coming out, James Mangold directed, he directed Logan, and then Ford versus Ferrari, and Walk the Line, you know? And I think This is one of his, you know, works that he's known for. And it just kind of set itself in, but also just overall as a movie, set itself in there too. And I think another thing is, when he directed Logan, he had a very good way of, like, promoting the death of the character, Mm -hmm. and... Like, as a real person who actually died, I think that, like, they weren't, like, they didn't make it too much. Like, they didn't yeah. give him, he's like, they didn't overcook it. Like, yeah. they, were, they they had a very sincere way of pro- showing his death. Yeah. And like, it was, there was a tragedy, but it left on a good note. Mm-hmm. There was a tragedy and then 180, a good note. Because mm. I think the ending would have not been as good if they left on a bad note. Yeah. It's really hard to leave a movie on a bad note. Yeah. Unless you're going to make it's another done, one. But yeah, it has been this, done. Yeah. Like Infinity War. But you know they're going to make another one. But Four vs. Ferrari, I'm not saying I hope that they don't make another one. I'm just saying this is like you only, no. need, you only, you only need one movie. This needs to be standalone. 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 Yeah, I don't know standalone. how they do another movie. There's I mean, no maybe point. with a kid, uh, that would be the only way. And the kid. he didn't, he, just no. What the, no. Yeah, there's no, not needed. No. Yeah, no, uh, that was that was bad on my part, but it was so. Yeah. There, there's no you shouldn't need. Shouldn't be on here anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I should leave. Sorry. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just kind of killing no, the episode. No, so <laughs> so I thought this was a good setup for both characters with Shelby's health situation. <clears throat> the and beginning. My, yes, in the beginning, and Miles' financial situation. Yeah, it sets mm-hmm. you up for the rest of the movie. Like, yeah. I kind of see where they need a way out. Not really, but I could kind of see like the path that the plot was going to take from there. Yeah, pretty much, especially with Miles. You know, like oh, he's going to start working for somebody. He's going to and this going to be this guy you can't soon be rolling in it. And then they're going to yeah, you got to get the Damon and Bale combo kind of thing. Yeah, that 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 was a good scene. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But I just felt like the movie was set up pretty well. I mean, did y'all feel the same way? I did too. You felt you felt it was set up pretty well. I think that the first movie like shows like. Carol needs a way out, mm-hmm. and so does Ken. And the way and their ticket out is they both join together and yeah. they team up. Which I think mm. the team up was even even better than they need each other because like Carol gave up racing because you know he he had some health problems. He had some health problems. Mm. Ken is is a continuation of his story of the other's story. They're whereas like, Carol is more of the enabler for Ken's story as well yeah huh. to continue they both kind of tag team yeah kind of yin and yin and yang and yeah. I, also i like the trope that they didn't use the trope actually that more it's uh it did really well with establishing like these gentlemen have a pre-existing friendship relationship, relationship with each other yeah because it wasn't like oh hey my, my name's ken and then my name's carol I you thought, know? I, I thought that was gonna be how it was same but but it wasn't as that wasn't it says the case. like when they have that fight, yeah, the first the, the first fight, thing is he, you know they're throwing a wrench at each other. Just boom, like I'm gonna lamp this at your head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but what it also shows is like when they have the uh, the fight when he's holding the groceries is he's like, how many years is that been? 
Like, yeah. they, they've known each other, and it's like, three years ago at the uh, SCCA uh, cham- Divisional mm-hmm. Championship, like, they're not, like, strangers to each other. Like, yeah. they've been, like, I think you know you have a true friendship when y'all can fight like that and get back on, the, like, get back on the grind. Agreed. Like, I see. Like, I feel like you need to have those kind of disputes, because, like, it shows, like, you're gaining more of a friendship. Yeah. Because if your friendship's perfect, then it's not it's not true. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, so I have something else. It's What did y'all think about the, the accents? I think they played a major part with Christian Bale having a British accent and Damon having more whoa, whoa, country whoa, accent. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was Christian Bale's real accent. Watch oh, yourself, no, partner. I know, I know that, but mm, I'm just saying in the movie. I feel like Com- he had it a little different. I feel like he had more Welsh in him, as you were saying. Well, he is. I mean, he is, yeah, he is I, I, he's well, I knew, yeah, he's I knew he had the, the, that British accent, but I'm just saying, like, for the point of this movie, most mo- roles Christian Bale's in, he's Oh, you mean American. you mean compared to what we usually see. Yeah, yeah and Damon with instead the of like, country. Instead of, like, let us see Paul Allen's card, you know? Yeah. I wasn't... Yeah. I, I think Matt Damon's accent was kind of ish. It was kind of off and on. Really? But I... I like the, I the touch. Ang- it, the I think touch it was good. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't touchy. too over the top. Yeah. I feel like it was. It was a good, happy medium. Mm-hmm. He wasn't too over the top. He wasn't too twangy or anything like that. My name's. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm from Texas. You know, this is how we all talk. It, it was. It was more just like laid back. You know, mm-hmm. like he had talked to Matthew McConaughey for a little bit. I was like, okay, I see. So you just don't overdo it. You mm-hmm. know, just put a little y'all into it. And I think that I haven't seen movie like I haven't seen many interviews where. Um, Christian Bale's talking his normal accent, but I do think he added just a little bit of it. But I that think little so too. that little spice and seasoning he added made it perfect. Yeah. I loved his accent. You know, now that I do think about it and we bring it up to mm-hmm. a good point, he did add just a little bit of pizzazz. But that too. but that, okay. that pizzazz was needed, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I think I it added think. complex complexity to his character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a way. Yeah, but shoot, we he that may have been his actual You never you know. know. Do, you never know. Do y'all know the um <laughs> Because he usually does, what do you call it? Whenever you, uh, it's like acting, but it's like you do it offset, like Cri- uh, Christian Bell usually like does. Voice, like no. voice, school? like he gets really skinny for some of his roles and bigger uh, than um, others. He's no, one of the I'm, best I'm, people on yeah. doing that. He, yeah, yeah, like he it did looks, for um, the I'm Machinist. Trying, he why got, why like, can't I think oh, of the that, term? And it's, for uh, Vice, he got like two hundred thirty pounds. He and got he went super back down. The, Jared, the, Jared, the Jared Leto. Yeah, the Jared Leto. Uh, yeah. method acting. Method acting. That's so it. Did, oh, do y'all well, know think if that. he did method acting for this role? I think. Um, I don't know if you've looked at his movie role. I don't know what movie he did before, but it I was do Vice. think it was Vice. So, no, I do know. I do know. Vice. So I do know the answer. I still haven't seen Vice. I do know the answer to this. Um, I will mention it later for the uh, for. Production tidbits. It was two years before. Twenty seventeen so was when he Vice He lost came out. seventy pounds wow. within eight months. Wow, that's and crazy. And apparently that... he just didn't eat. Oh, for the machinist, he only he would sit in darkness and eat sardines Ooh. for a couple months. <laughs> no, thank no. you. Uh, I'm not I doing know, that. Sorry, sorry. That that's a weird thought, but like, it shows his devotion to a character. Yeah. Now, that's do what really I think sets him it's apart. a little mm-hmm. bit crazy? Yes, but it shows. How much that he is willing to put in for his role, and yeah. I think for Ken Miles, I don't know how much he weighed, but he was kind of more on the skinny side. They he, they looked pretty identical, especially with that ending picture, you mm-hmm. know. <clears throat> but at the same right. time, like, if you look at real pictures of Ken Miles, he wasn't a big man. No, he, he was really wasn't. he was like, I wouldn't say he had a dad bod, but he was, you know, <laughs> like a forty five year old muscular man. Cause yeah, like. I would imagine, like when he was, when Ken Miles actually was fighting in the war, he was pretty fit. And then, mm-hmm. you know, like becoming a car mechanic after that, you probably lose some weight. But yeah, definitely. And think, being out in the sun like that, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty, and yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Uh, I know drivers; they mm-hmm. usually they have a pretty strict fitness tr- regimen too. Yeah, as well. For, mm-hmm. Not, so, not I don't as know much back then. then. As the, yeah, as nowadays, now. dude. Them F1 drivers. They, have you seen that Netflix series, man, dude? I need. I need to watch that. It sounds like them F1 drivers. Are legit. Okay. Like some Check of some out. of the stuff they the can list. do, like, yeah. like their reaction times, their neck strength. They like, they can memorize maps in their head. Like some Crazy. of the stuff they do is like, it's very very it's, impressive. Yeah, it's I don't think impressive. people give enough credit to, to they the racers. Don't. Same. It's really rigorous. I think. I agree. And I, I agree. Yeah. So. Um. What did y'all think about the capturing of like the '60s feel, 1960s America? I don't Texas. Think, 
you need to sugarcoat it too much. I think they did pretty well. Like, just ah. the backdrops were pretty good. The set the, design, I thought, was perfect. You know, whenever, yeah, whenever was, they're driving through, like, old Hollywood from the 60s. Mm-hmm. Like, when he's at the doctor, when he drives out. Yeah. That first opening scene. I think it, it's perfect. Yeah. Good and, cars. It wasn't over the top. It gives mm-hmm. that kind of, you know, like, burly, rusty feel of the yeah. 60s. Not, and you had not mentioned like, before the coloring, almost a yellow hue. You yeah. know, it kind of captures... A little bit of like a rustic feel for some reason. Mm-hmm. It makes colors pop a lot more. Yeah. Which, you know, when we look back at the 60s and now within just a cultural view, that's how it feels. Mm. It was like much more colorful. This was like pre-70s where, you know, everything changed dramatically. Mid-60s. So, yeah. yeah. You know, kind of the... Agreed. Yeah. Now uh, that I say this, this, I mean, I guess it was during the start of the Vietnam War. But yeah. That, that wasn't very... That was, I don't think that was referenced at all. At no. All, well... This is the West Coast, I feel. Like, yeah. I, sorry, that, I didn't mean to make that up, but like just mid-60s, I feel like, as you were saying, it did pretty yeah, well. Yeah, definitely titillated my love for the 60s, you know, which I I just, I don't know, I love the 60s. If I, if I, I don't know, if I really wanted to, to be able to choose, I'd probably like see 60s, if I could live 70s. in the 60s. I, I feel like... 60s or 70s, maybe. I, it'd be cool to live in the 60s and the 70s. I also think, like, it'd be cool to, like... I think the be 80s your, would be cool. You like I, the 80s? I think the 90s would be cool to mm. live in. Okay. I know what you're thinking, like, the 90s, but I feel like some of, like, just the movies and the style, I just, uh, it'd be cool, you know, to experience the 90s, but out of those, like, four decades, I'd rather the 60s than the yeah. 70s. I just feel like the old version of stuff, you know, just going back, I mean. Yeah. I know you, you're kind of a... Kind of an oldie, an old you school. Oldie. Yeah, yeah, I'm an old, I'm an old soul. The, the Beatles poster in your room says. <laughs> yeah, that that, says that, it. that paints it everything. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> no, I just I love the set design and I love when they use like '90s, oh, not '90s. You got me saying '90s. I like when they use Sorry. like '60s cars and. Yeah. Just I've always the, wondered where they get all those cars. Like, oh no, trust me, they. I I don't really know how, but you I, realize I've seen most of those cars are extinct. But yeah. they're they're able to. Revive they keep them, them somewhere, and the, like they usually fix them up and repaint yeah. them and stuff. It's crazy the the amount of work that. But the amount of movies that have those picture they cars have puts them into stored it stored up somewhere in Hollywood. But probably so. You know what? Another thing, it's not a big topic, but I think that they made the costumes like not way too expressive, just yeah. kind of like a not over shot, the top, not over the top, completely perfect. Just yeah. Nice feel. Yeah, it, it gave a sense of the '60s, but, but not like it wasn't, wasn't like. It wasn't like over the top where, you know, like, hey, like, we're hitting you over the head. Look at their wardrobe. Look at those set design. They're in the 60s. It was just enough to like, hey, yeah. quick reminder, this is the 60s. Okay, yeah. What, you, you, did you feel like that that way, David? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a, a subtle touch. Yeah. But it was a good touch. Yeah. It made it, I mean, it obviously, it really happened like the real story was in the 60s. Mm-hmm. So they had to implement that, and I think they did the right amount. Yeah. yeah. That's Not too much, just good enough. Agreed. Do y'all kind of want to start moving towards the storyline? and? Kinda yeah, we can do that. Through? Um, sure. I just, you know, good setup on both characters, like we mentioned before. Yeah, the, the, the behind the scenes was really good. Like, like, like straying away from the plot of the movie, just mm-hmm. all the setup, like, like the set design, the color palette, the cinematography, mm-hmm. the casting, all of that was very good. I think that put the movie on the level that it's on. Yeah, no, without a doubt. Um, but no, getting into story, I just... I feel like the story was just really well written, you know, very good screenwriting. Um, so I think the Butterfields, I'm pretty sure, is their last name. But um, they, so just the use of characters mm-hmm. and character development and the the dynamics too of different characters. I I just I, it's Butterworth, not yeah, Butterfield. Butterworth. Butterworth. Yeah, you, you got it. Butterworth. Yeah. Butterworth. Butterworth. Yeah, I thought. Did you? Did <laughs> no, you, I didn't. Oh, I didn't sorry, sorry, sorry. Just... But uh, but no, I mean, I just feel like it was also sorry. Uh, Jason yeah. Keller was always was also a writer. Oh, it. cool, cool. Yeah, I uh, no, I should have checked that out beforehand. <laughs> but no, so getting to the story, um, I just the each character was complex in their own ways. Hmm. I also felt like the dialogue. That they had each all the dialogue that they had was pretty straight carried the, the story really well and it like served each character very well it showed where america was you well, know in the w- 60s in the 60s and where 
Ford Motor Company's was as well. John Bernthal loved loved his role in this. Um, he, Do you think it didn't sugarcoat it too much? Like the dialogue didn't completely carry it, but it also gave it some really good leverage. Yeah, a lo- I think a lot of the movie was pretty dialogue. It was very dialogue heavy. I don't, I'm not saying it was like a dialogue fully dialogue driven movie because there's right. obviously the element of the racing, but right. the dialogue like set up the race well. Yeah. No, it really did. I think the dialogue was probably like eighty percent. Yeah. Say, of the movie. Yeah. No, it really was. Oh. Uh, but it, I mean, a lot of which, movies need well, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in a racing movie, like because uh, more of an auto. Because the race got to be the, has to be the climax. I mean, yeah. it's kind of like in all racing movies. Like a biography but, too. I also mm. think James Mangold was really good at like in the racing. He was able to like express it through without words. Yeah. Like the dialogue helped, but like when he's in the moment, like when you see the zoom in on his face and the yeah. focus, like the the gear changes. And yeah. In the, the gas pedal, he really likes to. Yeah, he like he likes getting those shots of getting it. those shots. Of but like, I think that really shows like the intensity and like yeah. just the lead up, and to top it all off, like. Christian Bale's portrayal of Ken, like the jolly fellow, like the the yeah. voice, he's like, "Now for you, done." Like he, while he's talking, <laughs> he likes to talk to himself while he's driving, and I really like that aspect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was reading up on his, uh, his son who like, you know, witnessed it all. He says like yeah. his dad loved to talk while he was driving. That's like, funny, and I think that was cool. Like you know, yeah. just us guys tend the to do jo- that a lot. the jolly aspect of intense driving. Yeah, another part of this movie, I thought this movie was relatively funny. Like, there were a lot oh, of funny yeah. scenes. There were a lot of, like, yeah. It wasn't, like, crack up laughing, but, you know, it gave you a nice little... A little chuckle. Yeah. yeah. Chuckle. Every, every now and then, it wasn't, like, over the top or really took you out of it, but, like, it was also dialogue, humor, witty, you know? Yeah. It was witty <laughs> enough to where it was like just... Like, the fight scene between yeah. Matt Damon's character and Christian Bale's character. And it also it. served a lot, too, to the story. Like, you know, jumping ahead of the storyline now with when Carol Shel- uh, Shelby brought in Henry Ford, the second... Mm-hmm. Brought him in and just like Henry Ford breaks down crying. Oh, that was hilarious! At first, when I was watching, I was like, "This is funny." Sad. And then, and, and then he hits the dad card. Dude, I was like, "A one eighty, laughing." Just a one eighty, <laughs> you know. I was like, because that was the point where I was like, "All right, this is getting it, a little over the top now." But then it's prove it's it's also showing like Carol's trying to prove that Ken Miles needs to drive his yeah. car. Yeah, and well, yeah. that's what I mean. Is it it shows it plays to humor, the. But it doesn't go over the top, and the over top kind of shows, like, where the sh- story's going. Yeah. And also adds, like, you know, as you said, a good chuckle. Yeah, <laughs> it does that. And, you know, it also show it brings in the emotion part, too, like where you mentioned where he brings in the dad card. Mm-hmm. It, it, it gives you another sense of, like, you know, Henry Ford is not, like, a bad guy, you know? He's he not He's to... not the antagonist I here. Mean, yeah, the antagonist That's... was... Um... Josh Leo Luke, BB. Josh Luke is yeah, BB, yeah. But I think also another thing is like, when you're running a Ford company like that, you have to be kind of the big mean guy. Cause yeah. I feel like this is one thing I've learned. Like, stern. If you want to be the leader of it, you have to inflict fear. Yeah. It's just it has to be. But I think that's the one part where he shows like, this is his life and he cares about this a lot. Yeah. This and is. And Carol's trying to show like, I know you care about this deeply. You need Ken Miles to win you the yeah. Le Mans. Yeah. And I think that's, as funny as the laughing was, I think that if you try to look past that, it was truly proving that this this is how bad he wanted yeah. his well, to win. Also, like, it just, you know, it, it like, this was also very character, you know, I say it was dialogue-driven, it was very character-driven as well. Mm-hmm. And it was also showing that, like, a lot of the story... Yeah. It's based on, like, ideas. This is all based on, like, you know, people taking risks. risks. And Henry Ford was the guy that was taking risks with all this. And, you know, stuff where it was happening where, you know, um, Leo Beebe became the racing coordinator. Basically. And the antagonist. Like, yeah, he was the antagonist. Yeah, he was. But it also shows you, like, even though... Henry Ford knows that he doesn't want Ken Miles driving. He's willing to do that because at this point, as he says, like, he, like... He trusts Shelby. He needs, he needs, like, a step up. Like, Mm -hmm. he needs, like... I wouldn't say the company is on the decline. It's on the decline in racing. Yeah. I I think it kind of tied into whenever uh, the Ferrari, Enzo Ferrari said, like, you're not Henry Ford, you're Henry Ford II. 
Yeah, yeah. like that. So I feel like the whole dad thing was... about that really uh, added complexity to, to the Henry Ford the second character and yeah. almost the story. Like he had to beat them, and Kim Miles was the only way. Yeah, but it, that that was a really great thing. Like, like when someone comes after like your family name. And like yeah. the hard work that his father put in to put make like one of the best companies now. I feel like they make yeah. some of the best cars in America. Some of the highest selling vehicles. Yeah, yeah, like like the blood, sweat, and tears that that family put in yeah. should not be disdained by another company saying they're better or worse. Right. And that's why Let, letting them being pushed around. I understand why he was willing to do anything. Yeah, because. It was it wasn't like a selfish like I want to be the biggest and the best. It was to prove that you can't stay in my name. Right. Well, we do see a lot of that too within like films, and usually mm-hmm. that's like a point where like okay, this guy's bringing in, you know, his his dad, and he's you know breaking down. This is where is this going? It, it goes really somewhere. did bring you, and like it kind of hits you on a level too, because like you know like. I just you know I, you know I would want to make my dad proud. Like I wish my dad would you know see this and. He was really bringing you in, too, and, like, I just felt like that was a really important part. They didn't go too deep into the Ford backstory, but they gave you a hint on, on like... Yeah, on when where, where he, it was. And when he goes into the man factory, he's like, man comes to my office with an idea, he keeps his job. Like, yeah, he doesn't, like, want to ruin the people working for him. He wants to show that, like, my dad put work into this company, and mm-hmm. I want you to... Be a part of that, but you have to bring something to the table. Yeah, agreed. Um, so one thing that I was thinking about is the part where uh, you know he, Shelby's constantly trying to get Ken on board with him. You know, he's trying constantly trying to get Miles on, and Miles is being very reluctant. Of course, he you know talks to his wife, and there's a whole dynamic there, and I'll get to in a second. I want to get to that scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all probably know. Um, but the, the scene right before that, I really noticed there was a lot of character, and this is where the story really started, like, seemed to start, which was when he went and drove that prototype yeah. for Shelby on that. The GT40. Uh, yeah, that's right. It was. Uh, but, uh, and so that's where you see Shelby, not Shelby, Miles was very reluctant, but this was like where he's like, okay, if we actually have something here, and I want to be a part of it. And that starts the whole part where... Um, where Wait, say that again? Because I thought it was more Shelby was asked to, not he wanted to be a part of it. But once he was asked, then he's like, I want to dive in. Let's go. Right. And then, but he also knows, like, the man for the job is Ken Miles. Right. Although he might not be the perfect public image for Ford, you want to win the Le Mans, Ken Miles is the man to do it. Right. And... That's where you get to see that, too. Not to jump ahead, but... That's why I think this movie portrays that even though Ken Miles isn't in the record books on winning the Le Mans, he won the Le Mans. Yeah, he did. He, he like literally, he passed in first place. Yeah, literally. Yeah. And yeah, I I don't know how to phrase it any better than that, but I think that's another thing like that he joined into. Right. And that's why I think that at the end, he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame of motorsports. Agreed. And, I don't know much about motorsports, but I think my dad, I think he went to the, uh, I think he actually went to the museum of it and saw all that, but I think that's just a great little, I don't know, icing on the cake. I'm not trying to. Like like this, because it gives credit. Like, no one really, I mean, without this movie, no one would really know who Ken Miles was, to be completely honest, because his name's not really in the record books. So I think this, like, shine light on his story, and it was good. It was a good film to make. Agreed. so how about that argument that um, bet- that happens between an, I love a good argument between a husband and a wife in a in a movie, where the husband, right? You know, he's not trying the, to be the bad guy. He's not trying to be the bad guy, but he's also hiding like a f- little surprise, mm-hmm. you know. And then the wife s- suspects that something's up. She thinks it's you know because when she se- when she checks through the window and sees him riding off with Shelby, like oh, like what's going on? I thought she said have... he was done. Yeah, <laughs> but then it turns out you know like. He's, he's got a job. He's now. got a job. He's doing the two things. He's doing something that he loves. Day. Yeah. Where he provides too, which is the conversation that they had before. That he, she was like, "You love to drive. You love riding. Why don't you keep doing this?" He's like, "Well, I can. I've got to, you know, to put food on the table." Yeah, I, that's why I, I don't. The scene was good, but I feel like she kind of wanted him to drive and do what he loves. 
So I feel like if she saw him in a car, she wouldn't be as like angry. Mm -hmm. Maybe I guess the reason she was angry is because he lied to her, or you know, yeah, right? Not, well, that's not the being thing. truthful is kind of like a big like thing that can't really. In yeah. a good relationship, it's always good to be truthful. Yeah. Trust I mean, yeah. me, guys. Trust me. Yeah, take I, it. For, I, take it from me, guys. I'm not in a relationship, <laughs> but I know that far. Yeah. And so you're saying coaches don't that play. He was the coach. trying to lie to her. It he was. Just, yeah, he just he, didn't know. So he I think thought. Her, that by telling her that he was gonna win, he was gonna earn two hundred dollars a day driving, that she wouldn't like it. When in truth, she wanted him to drive and she right. wanted him to do what he loved. And I think that's what ended up happening. And then when her reactions like, "You're earning two hundred dollars a day mm -hmm. doing what you love," and that's when I feel like she switches. Because when Ken Miles crashes when he's testing and they have the brake fade and where he explodes, yeah, like after she's completely fine. Yeah, she's like. This is the sacrifice that's going to be made to provide for our family, and you're doing what you you love, and you're putting food on our plate, and I can't be mad about. That. Yeah, well, she, again, you know, she said, "Why don't you keep doing what you love?" Um, but no, nah, it was uh, the main part of that was that he wasn't being completely truthful yeah. to her. That's all. But no, nah, I love a good scene, you know, especially when an argument like that between a husband and a wife ends on a really good note, and more of like the wife being or husband <laughs> being surprised and like. Okay, cool. Glad I know now. I love it, though. You know, <laughs> yeah. type thing. But also, uh, sitting on that, I love the the chemistry that happened between... Um, shoot, I don't even... I forget her name. Uh, Molly. Molly. Molly and Ken. I love their chemistry between that actress whose name we were butchering and Christian Bale. Do you think they showed enough of her? Do you think they showed an ample amount? Whatever yes. they did show her. She was awesome. Yeah, no, she. I feel like they maybe should have showed a little bit more of her. Yeah. Like while he was, I mean, well, while he was racing, they showed her a little bit, but. I, yeah. I true. think she got oh. enough because, as we remember, they named it Ford versus Ferrari, not Ken, the legend of Ken Miles. I yeah. think. Now, they do need to get in the backstory of Ken Miles because he is kind of the main character and right. the way Ford beat Ferrari, but. I think they gave her just enough. They could have yeah. given her a little more, but at the same time, it's a two and a half hour movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They well, need to focus on them winning, and you know, at the end, like it has a subtle ending. Yeah. Like, well, you can also look at this movie as like a almost like a collection of vignettes between different stories: mm -hmm. the story of Ford, the story of Shelby, and the story Ford. of Ken Miles. Mm -hmm. There's like three, and then. And the uh, compile of all three of them yeah, to make it. Yeah, or even Ferrari to a certain degree, you know? Yeah. Not so, really. Yeah, yeah, but like... They have a movie coming out to prove that, so. Yeah, pretty much. But no, this is a collection of different stories. Mm -hmm. Whether it's just, you know, business and it's, it's a, you know, a collection of very American stories. Besides, except for Ken Miles, because he's obviously an Englishman. But... You know, but it's it it's just a good collection. But what I was referencing is the the just the chemistry between and, husband and wife, and it did a good to get back to your question. I think it showed enough of her, but it was also just enough to like where you actually appreciate her and get to realize this woman's a ride or die. Yeah, she's a she's kind of a big part of Ken's life. Yeah. And kind of supporting him in something that's yeah. dangerous. She and, is a ride or die. You know, to go back on what you were saying. <laughs> Thank you for getting that. Um, this I don't in. think... What? Okay. <laughs> to go back on, like, supporting your country, I think it's more on the uh, the the car brand. Yeah. Well, Ken Miles... Uh, hold, hold on. I see what you're saying. Go ahead. Go ahead. I checked, like, all the winners of past, like, Le Mans, and this movie was focused on the companies because... From 1960, uh, 1965 to 1962, one of the Ferrari winners were both American. Mm. They were winning with Ferrari cars. It was more right. on who you're supporting as a company instead of the country. True. Mm. And I do like the American aspect of Matt Damon, but I also like the portrayal of Ken Miles supporting Ford. Yeah. Because as you see in the end, like I think David said it like, Ford wasn't giving Ken Miles the respect he deserved, and he, yeah. and then you see Enzo tip his hat to Ken Miles because yeah, he knew like he deserved that. it. That was that was that a was, good little nod off, basically. Yeah, and what I said, I was like, 
Yeah, Maybe I think he the could guy go... should go race for Ferrari. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Well, that's where I was expecting it to go. But if he stayed he were to loyal get... to Ford. I mean, he got killed testing one of their cars. And actually, five months prior to his death, the same car, I think it was called like the Ford J car. Mm-hmm. It was like a, it was a uh, prototype of the new Shelby GT. He died too. And mm-hmm. I think that's another thing like, he wasn't selfish. About losing the Le Mans. Which if anything, definitely is the, the, the ending overall. Of it. It's kind of like a character arc kind of thing. Yeah. Big time. Because I know everyone likes a good ending where he wins and he picks the selfish choice, but at the same time, like, you respect his yeah. loyalty. Yeah, I'm kind of a sucker for uh, sweet and sour endings. Yeah, me too. I, me too. I like it. I think it just, like, makes the movie, like, like kind of different. Yeah. Did y'all see any tie-ins with Cars? Speaking on <laughs> selfless and like racing, like no. definitely well, the, which, the which cars, what? like the first cars, like Disney Pixar Disney cars. cars. No, yeah, well, there's four, so I was like the so. one that really matters, mm-hmm. cars two. There's no, three. The first one, yeah, there's Dude, three. You, did no, there's, you just there's say there's there was four. four? No, there's three. There's three. There's three. There's three. There's three. There's three. You, you dim rod? What are you doing? Yeah, uh, cars so, three was a lot. It's all good. You're probably thinking of Toy Story. Honestly, they probably might make another one. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, but no, like. You know, just the thing of like Leighton McQueen helping the king, you know, and out of, in the end, and just like the the extreme racing, and the cinema like the cinematic use of yeah. like the cars, which we'll get into cinematography Actually, notes. Now that you say it, I do see a connection because and even those the backgrounds at the beginning of Cars, Lightning McQueen is the young rookie who's all about himself, mm-hmm. and the city of Radiator Springs makes him a selfless respectable person and i think i would i wasn't saying ken miles was like a jealous and selfish guy at the beginning but i think ken miles and being a part of ford kind of softened like yeah. and showed him that like you don't need to blow a gas you don't need like like i am did. proud of like being <laughs> you know working with ford and i think that that's kind of the two connections if you wanted to have of those two movies mm-hmm. but that's all that's what i was to bring about it, yeah. you know, just you. a small little connection. I get you. Yeah, I just, I just found a few little connections. Sometimes, I'm like you know, this is the cars for grownups. So that's how I felt <laughs> yeah. about it. Um, but I also felt like, and I appreciate this. I'm sure y'all could too, and anyone else who are not motorheads. This had a this. I'm not a motorhead. If that's what y'all thought, I just like cars. No, no, we, yeah, we, we we got that. We got that. Uh, no, you're good. Um, I felt like this movie did a really good job. Explaining the mechanics and the intricacies of like, and how well Ken Miles knows a car. Yeah, well, like, like also they would explain like you know this this and that. It's like that went right way over my head, but I get an idea of like what it's doing and what they're yeah. saying. Like and Ken Miles, that's decreasing like, the horsepower and like you know this is adding more weight to it and yeah and like the stuff you're saying away. about like get this engine and the, like I didn't know what the engines were, but it just kind of shows his expertise on the subject. Yeah, and, no, without a doubt. And how much he really loves his cars. Like Samuel was saying something earlier about how he used to talk like, to all his cars. He's like, yeah. yes, giddy up, giddy up, like. <laughs> he tries to show, like, his affection for a car, and, like, I've kind of looked on some of, like, a couple years back, I tried to memorize, like, the inside of a machine of a car. I, I failed. Cause, yeah. But I think what it's showing is that it's not that we need to know what he's talking about, it's that he knows what he's yeah. talking about. And he, like, True. when he isn't allowed to go to the Le Mans in 1965, that's the year before he goes mm-hmm. and wins. Right. Wins, he... Is working on the car, you know, doing his mm-hmm. stuff, listening on the radio, and he he knows like he doesn't have to be there to know what's going on. Right. It's kind of like that's that's his expertise on the thing. Right. Well, I just feel like this was very com- a, this was very easy to be communicated to us mm-hmm. as non motorheads. Yeah, yes. that's just how I felt about it. Because like there are kind of there are a ton of movies that. I can't follow because they're talking about stuff and expecting you to know what it means. Exactly. The, huh. Because so this goes back to like when I, you know, when uh, my uncle, I remember he was telling me like, dude, have you seen Ford versus Ferrari? I was like, no. At one point he was like, look, I know a lot of people think that this is just for, you know, I keep using the term motorheads. This is yeah. for just for people who know their stuff about cars. But it's not. It's not. It's Anyone for everybody. It's to, it's to it. show yeah, exactly. The, Backstory. Exactly, and it's so something that's relevant to everybody. You know, everyone just like, oh, there's a Ford. You know, like Matt Damon's in this. I, I'm gonna love it. You know, something like that. 
it, and like it goes back just to I don't know like I keep using this term and y'all I don't know if I'm getting my point across very well with like how it's this movie feels very like uh, American but it's also not like people f- like that are not American can enjoy it but it just has that like kind of old rustic American feel in uh, like, European f- countries it's not called Ford versus Ferrari it's yeah, called it's Le Mans, Le Mans 66, 66. Uh, I did see that I did see it too yeah but um actually for some weird reason I was I was on Disney Plus. They had it on there for a while. It was weird. Yeah. It, but but it wasn't. It was in English, but it was called Le Mans sixty six. It was no. I'm being dead weird. serious. A couple months ago, it was on. I believe you. It it was weird. I don't know, but it, it was on Disney Plus. I I could be wrong, but it it said Le Mans sixty six. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. I don't. Have to, I'm, I'm, that I'm, was just a random more. thought that flipped through the head, but I've seen it on Disney Plus. I want to look more into it. Well, but now it's on Sling TV, I think. I, I checked that to yeah. see the streaming service so I could watch it yesterday. Yeah. Well, we did it the old fashioned. We did it the very, very old fashioned, well, the hey, nomadic way. Went it's to the not library. Nomadic, got, it's yeah, more but... original. I like I like your original style of it. Well, it's no, it's nomadic these days. It's not streaming. We we well, got a physical Blu-ray from the library. Um, oh yeah, the the OG way, the, OG the best way. way. The yeah. cigars on your table. <laughs> show, Look, you know, show the old style, man. Yeah, you gotta, exactly. You got to stay true. I mean, hey, look at us. We're, exactly. we're in suits, man. We could be sitting. Exactly. I don't know. We're we're classy. Yeah, the classy we're way to do it classy. is to go to a it's library. It's called the Bowtie Movie Lounge. Yeah. yeah. Like, we could exactly. be sitting in tank tops, and I don't know. And we, that by then we would just only stream everything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, well, let's let's see. So, what did y'all think of the very end? Like just. Did y'all, were there moments in this movie where y'all like, oh, ooh, like, wow, like he just hit him. That like kind of surprised me. And we'll get into uh, the Oscars. Oh, yeah. Uh, the sound, I don't know why, just kind of punched me and like, you know, you could almost feel the vibrations of the tires on the road in, within the race. And like, you yeah, could really. almost like feel, like f- almost feel the sweat dripping down Miles' face, you know, as he's like driving down the Le Mans really? And, uh, it was immersive. Yeah, it was. I don't, did y'all find it to be as immersive? Good word, by the way. I, yeah, I thought it was immersive. Big boy word. I, I, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but as you were saying, sorry to interrupt, but I think like we were watching it on a small TV with not a incredible sound right, system, what, what, but it really jumped off the screen. Oh my goodness. Eyes. Okay, I'm gonna take offense to that. Well, I'm, I'm, joking, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I thought the TV was nice. Yeah, no, I'm you. not saying it's bad. It's, 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 not, like, it's not 4K, but you know, it gets the job done. What I'm saying is we're not watching it in a theater. We're not uh, watching yeah. it with like the big boom sounds. Like, yeah. I feel like even Ooh, with your that would be nice to go watch. Yeah, I really yeah. wish I do wish I watched it in a theater. Now that you mentioned that, but what I'm saying is even from your TV and like where we watched it, it really jumped off the screen. And for anyone who watches it, I think they would agree. It doesn't take like just the way like you grasp the sound. Like some movies, there's sound, but you don't really. Yeah, it just has that flavor right. that I really liked. Well. Don't but, take offense to your TV. No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I was just messing with you. I'm just, ah. Yeah, it's just it's podcasting. That's that's what it's called. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I like. Did any of y'all? So did you feel like it was pretty immersive, David? Yeah, I was about to say that the shots, some of the cinematography, Ooh, definitely we'll get, helped. We'll get into that. Because Can you tell of me like what the shots is? of the. Okay, so immersive. Sorry, I, I, so immersive you know, is where it really brings you in and you feel everything. Oh well, yeah, I know. You know, what like that means. Sorry. Rea- even virtual reality is supposed to be like immersive, but it, you know, not as much. It really triggers your emotions. Yeah, so like, with, like I thought the cinematography really helped because of like the shots of the tires, the yeah. shots of the car, like uh, that's later. I know cinematography is later. But yeah, I think that really helped with the. Merchant. Also, the yeah, the sound like you were saying, like yeah. the the car, the sound of the cars, and the sound of the, you know, yeah, I thought it was a good immersive experience. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I, I don't know, just like there were moments where like something would happen, and like I usually don't react like audibly, or you know, I don't even like really jump sometimes. I really don't. But then that happened within this movie. Yeah, and the explosions. Yeah, definitely. like the explosions. Yeah, like those explosions, and I don't know if it was just good sense of directing where like it pulled on like the emotional strings sometimes where i was like oh my god like that's terrifying you know or you know just this just use- a subtle way of putting in yeah stuff and you know another thing that is kind of my hit uh a uh, future hit pick you know cgi didn't pop off the screen too much it was it very it was very like there were some things like light. of course that's cgi they have to use that in movies but like mm. it wasn't like 
overcooked. There were some times where you could kind of tell, but you're like, eh, it's not, it looks good. It, it looks, looks good, good enough. It looks great. Yeah. I can like almost hand wave it, you know. But no, I agree. Did you, was there anything that you wouldn't have hand waved? Because there wasn't me. I wasn't. It won best editing of the year, but there wasn't much that really kind of popped off. They're like, they should have fixed that, you know. Hmm. Um, I don't remember. Not really. Anything. Well, I guess not we'll, really. I guess we'll get into it. Eventually. You know, we'll give a little bit more thought into it, like in nitpick the nitpick section. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but no. Um, I just I felt like that end race definitely had a lot of those moments that I was just explaining where. I was like, oh my god, like, wow, like, this is tense. I don't know why I feel like this about a movie that's taking place just within Cars. Like, I feel like this is, a lot of it had to do with, like, the music and, like you mentioned, the cinematography and just the immersiveness within that last race at the Le Mans. I, I, you know, I just, you know, the the drama between the actors of Shelby having to react, you know, work with uh bb and you know henry ford and that last little like kind of twist where they're like hey we want to get all three cars at the same time just for just for a business move you know just for marketing do do you think he knew that he was going to lose if they put all three cars together Ooh, i don't think so i yeah i don't i just think he wanted to do that for a business i don't think he really like was like all right if i do this since he started 10 seconds behind he'll lose yeah I think it was just kind I of like a business move. Yeah, I yeah. don't think he knew that. And that's why I think they didn't go in depth on, like, Shelby getting super mad. You only see him grab him. Like, I don't – as much as I didn't like mm-hmm. Leo BB, I don't think he was trying to force Ken to lose. I think, but I don't – okay, but I do think his intent was for him not to win. Yeah. Not to yeah. lose, though. Like, yeah. to tie I, – I think, honestly, like, I know it really wouldn't be – I guess that was probably realistic. Like, he didn't know. But I think if they wanted to make the story just a little bit better, they should have added, like, a little dialogue or scene where he's like, okay, like, someone came up to him and told him, like, well, he started to take us behind, so he'll lose. It would really, like, add to the antagonist part of his character. Yeah. Like, he no. knew he was going to lose, but, like, the viewer knew, but they didn't. Yeah, no, I I agree. There's also a uh, another part. So if you go and look at the actual photo shot of all three, mo- of all three cars going Yeah, I want to go look at that, actually. Um, they don't all finish side by side. The one in the middle, which actually, this is kind of a nitpick. Ken Miles is on the far right, not the middle. Oh. And the middle car is about 10 paces back. So mm. they don't finish a lot hand in hand. I think they probably should have fixed that, especially since it's iconic photo. That was kind of a nitpick for me. I think mm. if they're going to go in depth, they should have fixed that. That would have been something I really would have paid, you know, been... Really I can pull up continuity. Yeah, we can pull up okay. the photo. Next I feel like time, that. W- but, yeah, but I, I thought that him being in the middle was kind of poetic. Like he was yeah, kind like, of yeah. both along by him, kind of like a picture of like him in light, the middle yeah. leading. Like I think whenever they finish in the movie, he he was leading mm-hmm. by like just a little bit. But I feel like he was kind of like pulling them along the back, like pulling forward. Yeah, like it was like, like a Lightning McQueen as, moment, like yeah. bringing them in. Yeah. Like that's what um the Molly says. Like. It's okay. He's bringing him in. Like he, yeah. he's he's yeah. he's the yeah. he's leading the legion in. Like good connection, pretty much. Yeah, the ending aspect. I just felt like it was a really good send off, a really good ending to a film, and it just it, it paid tribute to Ken Miles very well, um, and just the legacy of Ford, and didn't even really spit on the name of Ferrari. I feel like it was they just... They beat them. They didn't yeah. disdain them. And then it's not like, you know, they show Enzo Ferrari. And he also, he, he, after he, that, he had a lot of respect. Yeah. Like, the tip of the hat. That was a good, the, like... I don't know if y'all saw this, but he, like, respectively told, like, of course, you're going to have you're gonna have beef. You're going to have, yeah. like, you're going to have pride for your company. But then his respective walkout, he does, I think he does, like, one of these, like, just... Very like humble, respectful nods. Yeah, and I think he walks out like, "I lost, but I think I lost to respectable men," and yeah. that's why I think he tipped his head to Kim Miles, which I very much like. Yeah, and Agreed. then I'm not saying that change in Joe Ferrari. I'm not very big on him, but I do think that was a very good portrayal of him showing the respect that Ken Miles deserved, Agreed. and that adds yeah. onto the the Ken le- the Miles legacy. Agreed. Well. No, I just thought it was a, a perfect ending, a sweet ending, especially with between Shelby and uh, his son, whose name is slipping. Peter. Peter. And it kind of showed Peter you Miles. the type of 
person that Shelby was. Like, mm-hmm. he wasn't super, like, he knew what to say. He kind of just, like, words don't fix anything. Yeah. Isn't that what he said? And yeah. I think that's why and he gave like, the well, wrench. this tool does. Yeah. So, I thought, because whenever he was looking at the wall at the end, I, I was like, oh, I was thinking, I thought back to the the... The wrench. The wrench. Yeah, I saw that. That was a really good shot. You yeah. Know, where it was out of focus, but you can. It was the shot was set up in a moment in a way where you could see the wrench, but it was out of focus a little bit. And I thought that was what do you give it off? really good. Um, uh, wait, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna basically say that, but yeah, was, I do think that like he was a simple man. I don't think words could describe like what he needed to say yeah the wrench was the symbol of like it was a symbol was of friend. trust and friendship <laughs> and friendship. it was definitely it was this the wrench was almost the story yeah of the whole movie huh. like the symbolism like, you, do you agree with that like the wrench was almost like uh, it was almost like a macguffin of yeah, like, just the entire you think about the story func- the function of a wrench like it kind of like tightens like I, I don't know i feel like it added I keep going. With what you were saying, I just I feel like it could the wrench we could have do, like dove deeper like within the research where, and I, because he used it to attack right you know, it was, and then it he was, framed it after he won which I thought yeah. was kind of funny like, yeah it's used to attack and the purpose of a wrench is to like tighten bolts and kind of like fix things up and yeah. mend mend and, the relationship yeah but also it was you like I don't know if y'all remember in the first part the first race where yeah, he threw he, it at he, him he threw it at him but also Shelby picked it up. And at some point in the race, he was still holding it. And he was almost clutching it as if he was going to lunge it at mm-hmm. at Miles if he didn't win. And, and I love so the I, part. I, oop, my bad. So I feel like there was just so much surrounding just the wrench. Like it spoke, you know, a million words. Yeah, and I basically. like how they put it in the beginning and the end. Yeah. And they like kind of like made you think back circle. to it. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. It, it went from Ken to Carol to Peter. Yeah. It has this perfect circle well, where Ken gets angry he frames it as like kind of a token of oh my gosh like yeah <laughs> he won like, and then he gives it back to peter as a sign of like carry, this was on, carry on your father's legacy carry on your father's legacy and this yeah i think it would have been cool he, if he i think if this wasn't like an actual like story like if this was made up and they want to do a sequel it would have to be about the son yeah but carry yeah. on the dad's legacy Agreed. with the like wrench even as a as a fiction fictional piece, it would have been good just as a standalone. I but, feel like that's another thing I really like about like these movies, like just a symbol of hope and legacy and relationship. Like yeah. just, you know, like for example, like an uncharted his chain or like the ri- like you see people have like their father's ring or yeah. just something. Your father's to carry watch on the- from pulp fiction. Yeah, just the <laughs> legacy This fa- that- this watch was up your a- your father's ass. Just the legacy good that you movie, leave behind and carry on. Yeah. That I really liked about the wrench. Agreed. It was just basically like the arc reactor from Tony Stark and oh. Infinity and Tony Endgame. Stark Endgame. still has a heart. Yeah. So it was basically like that. Yeah. But no, I mean, fantastic ending to a film. Um, I love. I was expecting. I wanted to see the little uh, details on like their lives. The basically the for the end credits. You know, like, you know, so-and-so went on to live this long, and Shelby, you yeah. know, kept his, you know, Ford and has gone down. You know, he made, he went and, Shelby did a lot, actually, for Dodge. Um, he actually basically designed the Dodge Viper. I don't know really? if y'all realize that. that. He went on to do stuff with Dodge, and, of course, Chrysler is the luxury version of Dodge. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on that, but I, the, it... Chrysler is definitely, I'm pretty sure, manufactured by Dodge. But not nah, fantastic film. Yeah. It it said what it had to. That's my take on the end of it. Dude. So I can give y'all uh, some production tidbits that I found. Um, if y'all are ready for that. What um, about uh, hit picks and nitpicks? Yeah. Just then to finish off that, and then favorite quote, of course. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, uh, we're getting to that. But no, uh, I'll be real quick with uh, tidbit finish productions. Up. Um, so, in preparation for his role, Christian Bale took race driving lessons at Bondurant High Performance Driving School. No, I actually don't know where that is. I can't remember. I want to say it's in California. I need. A, I should Probably. have looked that up. I mean, that's where it took place. I would imagine. Yeah. You never know. As it happened, uh, as it happened, the founder of the school had been a friend of Ken Miles. 
So in addition to the driving, Bale also got to hear stories of the 1960s racing scene. Bale's instructor in the film's stunt coordinator, Robert Nagel, later stated, he's hands down the best actor I've ever trained. Very cool. Bold statement. It is. Matt Damon said the number one reason he wanted to do the movie was to work with Christian Bale. There was a lot of other stuff. Game recognized game on that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's what I like about Matt Damon is he he just picks his roles for various reasons. He's not too pick. He's picky but not picky at the same time. Yeah, that's how I see it. But also, like, he only does good roles, but he doesn't care where he stands in them. Especially huh. in the new movie Air. Yeah, I saw yeah. that with, uh, yesterday. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, with, um, you liked it. I with it was Ben good. Affleck. I, mean, I didn't like it as much as this movie. Yeah. But yeah. Same, similar just, story. In a way. way he, the way he's able to work and compart with others is yeah. very well yeah. done. And he can I stand. He can hold his own. Stand toe to toe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so this film was released in 2019. Four uh, years it, of marinating. Yep. Know. So I really didn't do a whole lot of 2019, but. The Oscars that it won were best... I think Parasite won Best Picture. Oh, that's right. That was 2019. It was... The big three 2019 were like like Parasite, Joker... Oh, and Endgame. Yeah. Endgame. Endgame was Endgame. 2019. Endgame. So. That's true. Whoa. That was a packed year. Yeah, it was, that was, a, it was a good year. And Very it was packed. just coming off Infinity I think War, it, so... Yeah. And Avengers I, yeah. was hitting peak. And I think it, it kind year. of... Not saying it outshined this movie, like it was better, but mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people... It, like they saw in game and Ford vs Ferrari in theaters, I think they kind of overlooked Ford vs Ferrari. True. And they still won two Oscars. Because like yeah. you just saying, no, this shadow. is the first movie, or this first time you watch the movie. Right. Well, then the Oscars, the Academy Awards, n- is not gonna really won- look in, at a Marvel movie as much as yeah. something like this. So that it did have an upper hand. I, I saw the Oscar ness. Yeah. In the movie. Like, I see how the yeah. Oscars will we'll definitely get They got nominated that. four times and won two of the four. So, hey. I mean, that's... Best uh, editing and got, best, best sound editing. I mean, huh. think about it. Like, huh. Sound design. Being nominated for Best Picture in a stacked year with Avengers Endgame and Parasite. Yeah. Like, he, they didn't and win. And Joker. And Joker. Like, that's very... Yeah, I'm like, pretty sure Joker won Best Soundtrack. And Best uh, Actor. Yeah, Joaquin, sure. yeah. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. was great in that movie. But I think that just, even though it was in a stacked year, it was able to really show itself. As you yeah. can see in its box office and its two Academy Award winnings, I think Christian Bale won an award for it. He won yeah. an award for it. I forgot what it was called. But, but not the Oscars. But not the, yeah, not the Academy. Oscar. Academy. But Academy. Probably so. Or, oh, shoot, I, need a, I think the Academy is the Oscar. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, need, I need to make sure I'm right on that statement. So y'all can show us how much I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really put too much thought into the Oscars these days. Yeah. Same, honestly, same, but I do need to get... That's something I really need to get a lot more into. I probably just killed myself, you know, within, like, the context of being a, a film a, a film, film critic. Bro. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, categories. Hit Let's picks. start with this. Hit picks. Um, I'll start. So... I just I, the cinematography was probably my favorite thing, and just the use of like as we touched on a lot of the immersiveness of this film, and the acting wasn't too Flavor. over the top. Yeah, you know it wasn't nothing was over the top. Everything was at a happy medium, but like it just made a beautiful movie. I thought expressed it perfectly. Just a very beautiful movie. Hmm. So, uh, I I can go. Um, hit picks. I. Lo- I know this is kind of a weird one. I love the color of the film. I th- mm-hmm. I think that's a weird thing. I just like the shade, the '60s. Yeah, like tint. a lot of blue. It was a lot of blue and white. maybe yellow and yellow and white. Yeah. Just it was like a yellow hue, you know, yeah, almost the like hue. Mm-hmm. You know, almost like that meme that you see where like once a movie starts taking place in Mexico, it almost yeah, had like that, it, uh, yeah. Yeah. like a bluish yellow. But um, outside of that, I loved the small talk, the mm-hmm. the dialogue, just the hit, you know, the little throws. I um. I really liked how it expressed Ken Miles and showed his legacy. Mm-hmm. I really like kind of the rivalry of the two and like the backstories between everyone. We haven't touched on this love. I love. I liked Josh Lucas's antagonist. Yes, like, it was. It was. It not made, too it much. made you I really liked. angry at him. Yeah. It made you yeah. like have a hate for him. And yeah, I think, big time. I think that was the goal of his role. Is was like to be the antagonist, but also. To express like 
the more you hate this character, the more you love and respect. Yeah, and Miles I think he had legacy. a really punchable face. Oh, yes, yeah, oh does. my goodness, you want to talk so, about like, that? I, I feel like I, I can just hit him with the right hand, maybe a little uppercut jab. Just like, the one-two punch know, just combo. just made me feel that anger towards him with his extremely punchable face. And more respect for Ken. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. I, true. Because Ken doesn't. Did, I, don't think Bale throw hands. Punch, I don't think Bale is a punchable face. But. No. no, not really. And Josh Lucas, we're not saying that <laughs> Maybe your face. Vice. We're not saying that your face is terrible. No, it's, it's just, just really punchable. Just really punchable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just per- perfect. Like just a real good. Yeah, that. Yeah. No I can't comment on the punch, anymore. No comment on the punching, but his character definitely made me want to. You know, Ang- not really strangle him, but like you know, just definitely like like that's bad. Like, Smack his hand, yeah. Smack his hand. How about that? With a little ruler or something. Yeah, exactly. What's your hit pick? Okay, so like y'all were saying, I like I really like the cinematography, like the behind the scenes and everything. Mm-hmm. And I liked how it shined light on on Ken. I liked how it shine light on Ken, and um, the cast was really good. Yeah. Um. What else? I liked how they made it less. About racing and more about like a char- like less about like the race and more about like the character development. Because yeah. they definitely could have made it solely on the race. Yeah. I know for yeah. a fact. Like, it's all about the the game instead of the people who are in it. Yeah, because they yeah. easily could have just made it. Okay, he's losing the race and like very solely uh, yeah. on that. Yeah, and there was a lot of races in the movie. There, there was, were. There was three. Three. There was the Daytona. The the, the Willow, I think it was called Willow Springs, where he lobs yeah. the uh, wrench where yeah, he yeah, lands. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And then the Le Mans. Yeah. Because, yeah, it was three. Yeah. But we never really got into the Daytona, but I liked, like, his portrayal of that part. And, like, just a few quotes. Like, I'm going to say my favorite quote. Look at this now. Like, when he screams at the other Ford guy when he's about oh, to yeah. beat him at the end. Yeah. I like it. And also the sound. Like, you, you can feel the vibe getting bigger yeah. at the end, and I think that was a really good way of portraying that. Not to get off from it, and my only nitpick was they didn't have the correct uh, photo finish. Yeah. I, w- well, I guess I would, I would do that. Yeah, what, what's your nitpicks? So my nitpick, um, so interestingly enough, I love when a film, like a period piece like this, uses music from that time. I oh, loved the I score, mm-hmm. but I would have loved at least one or two songs song. from the 60s, just like maybe one or two. But I did appreciate that they didn't use that as like a, hey, this is a period piece, by the way. Like, let's beat you over the head with it. No, no I, but I do like, like where he's riding off in the sunset in like a 60s song place. Like at the very end. Oh, yeah. I, th- I thought that would have been good. Like if it was just kind of like a yeah, that classic that 60s song played while he's riding off into the sunset. It was more of a score and not really a soundtrack. So I really would have liked maybe like one or two of a soundtrack, you know. Um, let's see. Some of the minor characters kind of just disappeared. Like John Bernthal's character. Who Who is that? Um, oh, I forget his character's name. Was that the Punisher guy? Yeah, Punisher, you know, guy. So... There was song. There was one song that after the movie I watched. It was "I Put a Spell on You" by yeah. Nina Simone. It's when they're dancing yeah. in the airport. I that's know the that's only not one, a, but like, it, like would maybe you rather one, just one more, just maybe kinda, like one or two more, just a sprinkle in there, just but like. But that's not a nitpick. That's something you would have wished they put in. I wouldn't call it a nitpick because I, I, I mean, feel I wasn't focused true. on the music, but I get where you're coming from. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so I guess you know, talking, speaking your language, uh, a more of a nitpick would have been more like. It didn't have to be two and a half hours. That's exactly that is, that is I, very true. There was a little the too pacing much. was a little bit of a nitpick, like some of the pacing could it, that had some was fluff taken away and more climactic. I mean, obviously it's gonna happen in a movie, but I feel like it was a little bit too drawn out. They could have took out some of the I, uh, parts of the movie, like some of the races, like before, like the final climactic race could have been shortened down. Like I'm the, not the second race. Like, uh, I think the first race been could have probably been shortened. And I also think, like, when Matt Damon wakes up for the first race, they probably didn't really need that. That didn't really have a point. I mean... It wasn't too long. It wasn't too long, but also at the same time, like, they're trying to add, like, just a little bit of depth, but not, like... I think there were just some parts they could have added, took it yeah, off, like, thir- 30, 30 seconds to a minute. Probably, probably yeah, probably would have saved that, yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah, I think seconds. they could have made the movie, like, about a two-hour movie. Just two-hour yeah, flat. Yeah, it would have been good. It would have been good. But also, like... Do you think the majority of that was needed? Like, what? Mm, I think I think maybe another fifteen at least. 
taken minutes off. could have been taken off. At least 15. Yeah. But, it, if you really wanted to tighten it up, maybe 30, but I think 15 okay. or 20. 20. Yeah, something like that. Cultural impact. Um, this definitely is a contribution to, like, People, say a movie about cars. Or, like, just a sports movie in general, like a new yeah. movie to a sports movie. You I know, think that we don't have, like, Talladega Nights is a more rom-com. of a comedy. Rom-com. Uh, comedy, sorry. Yeah, it's more of a comedy. About to say rom com. Sorry, that that's my bad. Sorry. Some, bro, some yeah, but, bromance. But airplane yeah, some bromance. You know, some, some bromance big time. In bromance. There. Hey. <laughs> I, I, so what, 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 so what's we were, happening here? We were going for it. Dude, you, you instigated that one. Uh, no, I didn't. Man, yeah, okay. Uh, okay. 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 Never mind. Well, I'll, As I'll, we let's were just roll saying, it. I, I feel like that's the like that one. There's not really many other movies that center around wrong. like mo- like a a you know race cars, you know, or motor like mm-hmm. motorsports. Um, this one definitely kind of like put itself at the top. I feel like I'm trying to think of like other films. I can't. That... I think it really put it on the map. So, David, what do you got for cultural impact? Okay, so I don't. It was impactful, but I don't think it was like super impactful, like like some other films. But I think it was a good thing to add to the sports collage of movies, and it was a it was a sports drama. Yeah. So I think there needs to be more sports dramas like that, and I think yeah. it was a good opener to some, even racing movies to be like, okay, mm-hmm. we can try that. Yeah. Like and on a future, you know, racing movie. Or, have and like you mean like have you know have a little bit more of like a high octane, not mm. entirely a pun to you know this kind of movie, but have something more. Look, I don't know, just a different kind of energy, right? Honestly, yeah. more of like a character dive instead of more of like a. Like, I think in a lot of sports movies, it's just about the fight or about the game. Just strictly an underdog film. Yeah, it was like that uh, movie, American Underdog. Did y'all see that? Oh, about, oh, about uh, Court Warner yeah. and the Rams. Uh, my dad saw that. I think I, it, that reminded me of this. I think I saw of parts this. of it. I do get where that's coming from, but I think the cultural impact overall is putting out a movie that's been in its own category. Questions needing answers. Last shot. Do, do, do y'all think? I don't know if it really left me on any big questions. Any yeah, answers. mine is uh, you know, just what is fact versus fiction? I meant to like watch that oh, video, right? Yeah, yeah, we just yeah. didn't have any time I, to I watch have, it. I have three of them. The way Ken Miles died, he was ejected out of the car. He did not explode. Not it was the not, brakes. Not even the brakes at all. I think. Well, they may even mentioned like he just didn't get out. You know, like he just didn't get out. Who's just the, like, that actor? I don't know that actor's as, name, but like as Peter said, like he didn't get out, like. Yeah. As he's scared of what happens to his dad. But also, the the photo finish at Le Mans, they, they probably should have cleaned that up. Yeah. And um, huh. uh, there were a couple other things that was like it, but every th- I think those were the two main. Yeah. Outside definitely. of that, I think everything else, like, there's not enough information to say that it was. Yeah. Because as a movie, you have to have some things that are different just to help make the movie better. And I respect that. Do y'all think that uh, that wrench was like reframed or anything? Do y'all think it's still around? I'm sure. I'm sure. Still has it? I don't know. If that, think now that I say that, it? that's that's a question needing. Or is that even real? Is that even real? Yeah. Is the wrench real? Well, yeah. uh, look, uh, we'll never we don't know. know. Viewers can look it up right now. Viewers can look it up. Yeah. yeah or, d- don't don't or pause if, the pod. You know, it's just yeah. yeah, yeah don't it's, pause it's it. Too, I don't know if to be able to. It's too detrimental to the. <laughs> To yeah, their, to their mental health, or even, or even, uh, even Peter, you know, Peter, yeah. Peter Miles, if you can email us, please <laughs> let us know. We would love to hear that. Um, d- I don't know David, if he's still you, around, but I'm pretty uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, if he was around four years oh, ago, night, yeah, night, 1960. Yeah, he was like a little kid at like in the 60s. He, he has to so be. He's gotta be like in his 80s, right? No, 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 no probably like 60s. Like, he was 60s, born in the 60s, 50s, 70s. I got terrible. No, he's, I got terrible. he's 70s. Yeah. Yeah, 70s. it could be either 60s or 70s. Please let us know. That would be great. Or if you're even listening, that would be awesome. No, David, do you have any questions that need answers? Like I said, uh, I don't think there's many questions that really weren't answered in this movie. Because I think it kind of solely focused on... Maybe we need to l- learn a little more about uh, Carol's backstory. Mm-hmm. That there is, is a lot. Like, on his race. mental health, that was a big blank. Sorry about that. Yeah. But it's like... You see him slam his head, and he feels disoriented while driving. But, like, everyone's in, like, everyone, like, who's driving 
you know, Ken doesn't experience that. Like, why is it specifically him? Like, either he has, like, a high cholesterol and maybe his beats per minute, like. Yeah. But, but I think they the don't, racing they, does that to you, like, the constant yeah, stress of, yeah. like, I could die if I mess this up and I have to be perfect and all this stuff, really. They well, could, could have added of, a little more It was that. more of an actual physical limit condition yeah. that he had and yeah. not as much that, like no, yeah, his own. Mental, no yeah, yeah no, if he didn't have to mental. he would have kept racing wasn't yeah. as more of like a mental or emotional distress mm-hmm. that he was having it was more like he actually had like a heart problem I'm pretty sure yeah. it was is what it was and i think they had a good thing like a reporter came up and is like did carol shelby give up driving because he's mentally insane yeah and i think that went to show that that's not true he just like shows all and, things he, and he shows that carried away he can portray his driving through Ken as a manager. True. Which is a great thing. Yeah. Now, is that really a question needing answered? Maybe, but mm. it's not. It's Could focused more on how Ken proved himself and how Carol helped him through him being a manager. Right. Not as much, because I could imagine that you could make another, I don't know, short on Carol Shelby's career. Right. But no, there definitely could I think be. it's more of the combination of them two. Yeah, but, I uh, I agree. I, I but there also are a bunch of other things too that they left out within Carroll Shelby's life. Like he actually had a lot to do with uh Chevy before Ford. So I know, but it was a lot Ford versus Ferrari. <laughs> right. So there yeah. there's just saying I'll give I'm take. just saying that yeah, there is yeah, a yeah. lot that was left out within his life, you know. So all right, yeah, that's all. Notable so notable acting performances? Yeah, notable acting performances. Uh we've already mentioned that Bale, Bale Damon. is just top Bale did tier. Good. Yeah, Bale's just, always he hits every he, time. Every time, you know, comes in swinging. Even da- I like Damon. I like the antagonist. Josh yeah, Lucas Josh Lucas just, did really good as a bad guy, as you've just, mentioned. The way to make angering intensity on the like, the, like the smile he does oh, is dude. like yeah, just he real does snaky. this little. He's yeah. real snaky is how, like, I was thinking, like... He's a little snake in the grass. Yeah, just, just a real like, stomp on him type thing. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> just a real, like... Um, Matt Damon, we mentioned earlier, he just does a really good job of just playing a basic character, and I was even listening to a podcast today. Like he didn't need to do anything too much. Yeah, well... He didn't need, it. He didn't need to do too much. To he dips his, his toes in everything, like, within air, you know? He, he just, he takes all these roles that you would think are boring. But he, he adds, he adds to them. Yeah, Just agreed. Gives them a flavor that some people couldn't. He makes them feel real too. Like yeah. he made. The, I mean, like, they're both real. These last two portrayals, but he adds like just a little bit of movie flavor. Yeah. that really is needed. Kind yeah, of he's not like gives he's a not like to the, he doesn't the have fire. that movie star feel within his roles mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i know that's pretty low i mean like, well whenever you see him in a movie you you, you kind of are more like, hey, inclined to watch it like some credibility yeah agreed it, there is definitely some added credibility from seeing bale and um him together right like, yeah and the fact that they're pre-existing like large actors add mm-hmm. to the dynamic because i mean and yeah they've been around that time they had been in some yeah, they all Incredible had, like, their own movies. stuff, yeah. But and everyone just did phenomenal. Even, like, the background characters, like, I needed to go back and look up who played Henry Ford. He did great. Oh, huh. that, no, one, that one voice scene where he talks to the manufacturer and all that was Ford, good. that was good. We didn't really touch up on that. There wasn't too much to add. Yeah. But just, also the funny thing where he's in the car crying as we touched up on that. That didn't feel too unrealistic, you know? That didn't it, feel unrealistic. didn't feel corny where it very easily could have been. Mr. Ford, you are right. I had no idea. I had no idea. I wish my daddy, he were alive to see this. <laughs> to feel this. Now, this is not a machine. Does anybody can get in and easily control? Absolutely not. It could have been very corny. I can. Yeah. Adjust, that could have been a detrimental um, part of the movie. I really think that it could have. Yeah. But he was able to shine light onto the affection for his dad. Yeah, and even as the, I was saying. So, and then as the two Miles family members, those two actors, Noah Joop, I think is yeah. his last name. I'm butchering his name. And the actress that played Molly, I don't want to butcher her name anymore, but they both did a phenomenal, phenomenal jobs. Phenomenal side part. Carried, carried those, those roles. 
favorite quotes. Um, not too many in this one, but just like, there's small, just little enough. Laughs. Yeah, small, like some that I wrote down. Like you can stick this little sticker where the sun don't shine. You know, <laughs> uh, I love every look time someone now. tells me that. I look at that. this now. Look yeah. at this now. I like, like that. And, the, and then and then the gear change and the pedal to the metal finish. Just a good little, just add. Just nothing, nothing. Not not a one liner to say. Just something to be like when you hear it and you watch it. You're like, nice. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I just it's not always what they say. It's how they say it. Yeah. yeah. It it doesn't have to be very like one liner ish. It just the. The vibe that comes yeah. off of the saying. Yeah, right. I think Bale had a lot of good sayings because he was kind he of did. funny in the movie, kind of comedic at times. And some of them, Bloody like my, my next one. <laughs> That's a great one. My next one is uh, almost like it's got a lot of emotion with it. It's almost threatening and very like. What is that? So the one where he's like, "You got a face like a smacked artist, don't you?" <laughs> you know, that that's that one was good. That was sounded more Scottish, so I shouldn't yeah, I shouldn't then, try uh, that again. Where he's like. <laughs> I'm gonna pass you on the next turn, Dan. Like, yeah. Like he he has like a bit of like um, pride. Nature. He's like, yeah. I'm gonna pass you. Like, be yeah. prepared. I'm about to. And Shelby too. Like the part where they're like, all right, we'll see you after this race. He's like, no, that's fine. We got rear windows on this thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Where he, he where he sticks one at Daytona, and then uh, that was a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, cinematography. Great we've already cinematography. mentioned. Great yeah. cinematography. We've, kind of we, already, we've already kind of covered yeah. that indirectly. By Fedden, Papa Michael, Fedden. He's a uh, he's Greek. So I think I he's think. whatever his name is. I, I can't he's say He's from it. Nebraska. I don't think he's Roger Deakins, but he is just th- a good. He's good, really good. Did what good. it need to do to make scenes within a it car. Felt, yeah, interesting. he made it feel American. Yeah, and like zooming in on like all the cars and stuff, like the pedals, really good shots, the, the pedals, the, 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 the eyes, gear shifting, and the expressions within, like you know, like you're mentioning the shots of the cars passing each other. Just yeah. Throughout, because you need to, you have to make sure that you interact the watcher with the cars, because you don't, you can't rely on dialogue when yeah. you're watching a car. This isn't an animated cars film, yeah, which this, I think that that's what what's his name did very well. Yeah, James Mangold. Uh, no, him. Oh, uh, Fed, Fed and Papa Michael. I, I don't know how to. Yeah, uh, I'm probably butchering sorry, that too. Butchering all, that again. All yeah. the, all these yeah, yeah. yeah all these people who who parents name them interesting things <laughs> I, make it hard for me. But no, I just feel like it definitely carried its weight big time and it very easily. This, the cinematography, if it was bad, really could have made this just. Yeah, it's almost a make like or break. In an the okay film. movie. Because I think, like, as I said, like, very earlier about my rating, it, I think the cinematography, had it been bad, could have brought it back down, like, whole, a whole two points. What that about the layer. score? The score. Okay, I like the score. Me too. Uh, like, I think it was very score-driven. Yeah. Like you said, there wasn't really much of a soundtrack. I mean, well, there was a couple songs, but it was mostly the score. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not the not the soundtrack. Yeah. And I think the score was, like, triumphant when it needed to be. And yeah, kind of that's sad a good word. Or kind of... It made you like feel the situation better and immerse you. It was a very immersive movie. Yeah, no, I, I like your use of the word triumphant, uh, in the right parts and very somber, like you said. Yeah, somber. I I just like that it had a little bit of a jazz texture, mm-hmm. and almost had like a little bit of like a an outlaw twang. And they also American western. Yeah, just kind of like yeah. a very western feel. <laughs> very jazzy to texan you know i don't really have any story rewrites or inserts on no, this I, yeah the, I don't, I no can't one could no one could recast this movie this recasting is, as well, well. Uh, mm, there definitely is some think, room um okay i could see someone being a side character i couldn't see someone retaking christian Bale i think or Matt da- Damon. okay i liked christian but damon i feel like it didn't have to be Damon. True, uh, I agree on that. Who could it? Who could it have been? That's I, what I'm thinking. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Of, uh, With the budget spent on Damon, hmm. I think they maybe could have got a piece like hmm. possibly DiCaprio, uh, or I, Brad I don't Pitt. know. I think I maybe Brad Pitt. Pitt maybe. Yeah. Well, if I'm also trying to think of like that that very last shot at the very end. Because I think Brad Pitt. That like, really could have been anybody. Yeah. But I think the way his huh. facial expression was pretty good. But 
Ba- I think Bale was. I don't think he could have touched Bale. I think Bale no, was great. perfect. No, Bale perfect. couldn't have been touched because um, it's kind of like he's portraying someone who not only kind of ha- is from England, but just his jolly attitude. But I, I'm so Henry Ford for a second. I kept saying, I kept thinking, like, is that Craig T. Nelson, <laughs> the <laughs> the actor of Mr. Incredible, and he's in oh, a lot of like, that is like what, Poltergeist. That, that actually reminds me of him. That's who I thought it was. I thought it was him. You know, I, I thought me it too. Was Craig T. I Nelson. For, mm-hmm. That could have been, which it he probably would have carried a little more. Yeah, but in all honesty, I think overall, like. Once you've made a movie, recasting is just kind of an idea, not something that could happen. Yeah, and then I I feel like if we uh, uh, the Josh Lucas role could have gone to other yeah, someone but else. With the budget they had, I think I he has. A, I think that punchable face just needs to stay there. It could have been someone more punchable. I feel like <laughs> who's there's someone, there's who's someone more would have someone would have Been probably able to taken fill that, that role. over, taken that a step above, and it wouldn't have felt right. Yeah, and he was, was a, he had was the good. right taste of like looking like he was a good guy on the outside but not really being like yeah. he, to the public he was like a a good like true I don't know, he was kind of double double face, a double yeah. aged, yeah. double sided sword. Pretty much, uh, pretty much. That's how I felt about him. But Bale really couldn't have been touched, but there were co- some things that if someone was implemented, I don't think it would have had a negative impact. Right. As we were no, Just agreed. To touch on. It doesn't need to be touched. It's not important. Yeah. 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 Of course. Well, gentlemen, thank you all. Thank you both for joining me. I feel like this was a really good episode, really great movie. It was just, this was one that took me by surprise whenever Samuel mentioned, like, hey, what about Ford versus Ferrari? I was like, you know what? I haven't seen that one. I, I kinda have a fresh I take liked, on it. I kind of liked the watch and review just right off you know i thought that, that was really fun. good I, that was fun i hope y'all enjoy it as much as i do thank I, y'all for spending the day with me too of course yeah, yeah we've been here a while yeah five hours <laughs> goodness lunch in the movie lunch, hey, uh, hey what can you ask for what yeah. about the ice bath oh yeah we, didn't tell, we, we, did we had do a the little ice bath. ice bath session before that that was that was a good touch i think that made me top notch mm. very oh, yeah. quick yeah, no. well thank you both gentlemen for joining me um for the for people who follow the podcast these two gentlemen are very itchy to do whiplash so that will be one of the next episode few 25. coming episode 25 i think i'm thinking about you know unnaming un making the episodes not very numerical but yeah, it's yeah, coming but soon it'll it's coming soon, soon. And, uh, um and you two will be the ones to do it with you so we'll we're gonna ready. really brush up on that well for those who are watching or listening, you can either watch or listen to us, whichever one, vice versa. YouTube and YouTube and Spotify, Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever. Um, you can follow our Instagram for updates and reels, our TikTok as well. Uh, never thought I would have that. Or you can email us, mailbag at bowtiemovielounge.com. And we will see you next time. Adios. See ya. It was fun.